yeah, we've got a great connection. What's up, everybody? It's Wizard Foo. This is gonna be a this is a recorded live stream on YouTube later. This is a currently a live live stream on Twitch. And today I'm taking a break from all this stupid voxel gah stuff. And I'm gonna focus on gameplay. Um, I've hit a point where with the voxels I either need to go down one path or another and um, I've spent so much time working on the voxel engine that I've, I haven't spent enough time working on the gameplay. So what I'm going to do at this point is draw up some sprites, use them in 2D, and mock up the whole gameplay of the game using 2D sprites. Really, really basic stuff like black and white. And um, because the reason I'm doing that is because I will be tempted to create art content if I'm doing this voxel stuff any further. Or if I were even to use 2D sprites, I would be tempted to make them look good too, right? I'm very tempted because uh, part of me is an artist. So, um, so to resist that temptation and focus purely on the gameplay, I'm going to create some basic 2D sprites and focus entirely on that gameplay aspect of of this game. Get that mocked up. So what I'm doing today is drawing them sprites on this stream. And then maybe later tonight I'll start putting it together. So here we go. Um, I'm imagining that each of the arena is about 4096 by 4096. We should probably actually mock that up. Let's take um let's take a screenshot from Songbringer. Hey, what's up, Red Sands? I'm working on drawing some sprites to mock up the gameplay for this 3D pick voxel art game I'm making. Uh, but So it's not going to be voxel at all right now. I'm working on 2D sprites just so that I can focus entirely on the gameplay. How you been, man? What's up with you? Shoot, might as well just take a screenshot of it. Oh, not this one. If I get like a sort of like a map of the arena started, I can verify if that's enough screens. I'm thinking eight by eight screens worth of of content for the arena. What? Oh. Here we go. Oh, it's running in a window right now. Right, this is... That's weird. Let's get that to be full screen. Take a screenshot. And then use that as sort of like a a basis for how how big the arena this should be. Here's a funny thing that happened last night. I was sending data through a pixel buffer object with the right, the, the wrong byte alignment, basically. So it's causing the colors to flicker like crazy. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. I intend for Loadragger to be similar to Songbringer's art style, but just purely 3D. That's really the only difference. I wanted every little character to, to look like I drew them with pixel art, but they're actually 3D, so they can cast three-dimensional shadows, and I think that will look really dope. Okay, let's make this. This is 25. We want to make this width 420. I totally just chose that number out of the air. I mean, I don't, I don't know why I would have chosen that. 
for my ratio. All right, here we go. There's a screen. Let's make something that's 4096 by 40. Well, what's let's actually just do the, this the right way. I'm thinking eight screens so that half a screen can be left over on the sides. So 420 times eight, 3360. And if our height is 263, um, well, times eight, 2104. All right, so now we have this and we can just sort of like layer this in as tiles. Let's take another screenshot from a different area. Maybe this one. So we can just do this to like make it sort of a little more variety. Ah, uh, yeah. Really all I'm trying to do here is just determine if this is going to be a, enough or too many screens to play a 5 versus 5 game on. This might be too many. I kind of did some rough math the other day and I think about 8x8 eight eight screens will be good. Okay, eight by eight screens. Think about though, running that many screens in Songbringer. That takes a minute to run eight screens. All right, man, you too. Thanks, you too. Have a great day, dude. Enjoy your work, man. You too. So this is what I'm thinking about this much area is the arena. Let's look at that. Oh. So there's our arena and everything on the outside of this will just be extra content so that when the camera pans its angle um, because this is this is one of the parts of this is you'll be able to change the camera angle um, by like 45 degree increments or something just to really show that it's 3D and also give you a better angle sometimes you'll be, you'll be in, a, in a battle with your friends and you want to look at a different angle or something. Um, let's 
So let's go, let's get this color for like a, this would be like the lodestone down here. The other team would have their lodestone up here. There would be a river. Running through the middle. Maybe sort of like a something here in the middle. Or maybe this, this could also be cliffs instead of a river sometimes. Hmm. Yeah, both of those would do. Shoot, maybe even water could be on the outside. Water or sky, like your cliff edges that fall, that drop off, or cliff edges that go up. But here in the middle, this would either be a river or cliff edges that go down. We would need trees. Lots of them. Let's just draw them as circles. These are a bit too big, but gosh, this might be too many screens. Cause oh, I'm on a, yeah, I'm drawing a lot of like. Hmm. Not sure what to do about this. How many screens to put? I guess maybe eight will be the max. And then maybe some, some arenas are more like, well, they'll eventually I'll settle on something. Like, oh, six by six or four by four is a really good map size. But I guess having the capacity to go upwards of eight seems like a good idea. Also, there's the cave to the underworld in each area, so that would be... What the heck just keeps happening here? Oh, I keep... I keep using the brush tool, but it's not drawing. What the heck? What's going on? Oh, it's... Oh. Oh, oh, because I'm on this, like, 3D layer or whatever. Okay. A transparent layer there so whatever your cave entrance might be there and their cave entrance might be here okay enough of this let's move on to drawing some sprites that just represent stuff for now uh, once again these are gonna be very basic black and white 2d sprites and I'm thinking that each one is 24. Well, no, let's see the math on that. Oh, I already know the math on this. 20 by 12 gives me a screen that's about. It's a nice widescreen ratio. So 263 divided by 12. It's actually 21 ish and then 4 420 divided by 20 is also 21 it's usually it's 20 by 21 or 20 by what's that oops yeah 20 by 12 That's kind of too little to draw all these sprites. 
20 by 12. What would 20 by 16 be? Nah, I really do have to go with something that's... Like squares would work a lot better, I think. Maybe everything should be 20 by 20 to mock up all this art. And you look straight down at everything for this. Yo, Pedro, what's up, man? How you doing? Long time no see as well. How you been, man? So I either make them rectangular. For these, these are mock-up tiles. These are entirely mock-ups. But if I make them rectangular, it'll fit better with the widescreen so that you can have a more of like a 20 by 20 type thing. Thank you, man. Cool. That's cool. How you been? What's uh how's the job, man? Didn't you, you got a last time I talked to you, you got a job and in Portugal, I think, right? Okay, 20 is a good width. Maybe 16? What if we did 16? So that would be 260. This is entirely just a mock up, anyways. Nah, we do. We gotta go 12. Okay. It's Gisero! Yo! All oh, right. How is it, man? It's going good? That's great to hear. Super great, man. Okay, so we're going to do a black background. Continue on with these mock-up sprites. All right, so we need some mock-up sprites for each roll. Um, yo, each new Sarah, Pedro, you guys, uh, just joined the stream. I'm today. I'm making uh gameplay mock-up art sprites. This game is all, is going to be a 3d voxel art engine. However, I'm taking a little bit of a break from that. Cause I've already worked on it for more than a month now. Um, almost two months. And it's, I'm at a point where I have to make a, some big decisions and I just need to relax on it all. So I'm just doing, I'm focusing on gameplay this week. Woo. But it's going to be a short week because it's Thanksgiving. So I'm creating some mock-ups. Some, some really simple mock-up art sprites so that I can mock up the gameplay super fast without worrying at all about the art style. Whoa, you're integrating Unreal to render photorealistic virtual assets and stuff? Sweet, man. That sounds awesome. So we've got a lumberjack. We'll draw him as a hammer. I mean, uh, an axe. So there's the axe icon. Whoops. The voxel occlusion. That part is, um, that part works now. However, my one worry is that I'm doing it in software and there's got to be a better way to, to use the GPU. So that's, that's the thing right now. I've got all these like 
it's complicated. I talked about it in last night's video. So if you want to find out all about my worries about the voxel engine, that's in that last video. Yes, placeholders. Yes. Oh, man. Placeholders have never sounded so good, actually. Let's call this placeholders.psd. All right, next frame. We shall draw the builder's hammer. Yeah, that's smart. That is very, very wise. Using placeholders because the main thing for me right now is that using placeholders will cause me to focus because it's so easy to be tempted when you're making a game and you're trying to focus on the gameplay but then you look at an art asset and go god that could be so much better wow i would get so much more attention on twitter if i made better art and you go and you spend all your time making art and content and you don't work on the gameplay at all Anybody ever been there? That's where I am right now. There's a hammer. Simple stuff here. Lumberjack is the builder. What song is retention percentage? I have no idea. Are there lots of people playing the game? I don't know at the moment. I haven't looked in a while. Um, I will tell you this. It, it surprised me that, well... Yeah, it shouldn't have surprised me. But yeah, it was a steep fall off, just like most games. So at the very beginning of launching it, there were tons of players, tons of purchases. And then it falls off pretty steeply, just like most games. And a year later, you're at basically no sales at all each day. And, um, you know, less than 10 for sure. And then the only time you really get sales is it is when is when the thing goes on sale. Everybody is waiting for your game to go on sale. So you only make money when there's the Steam Summer Sale or the Steam Winter Sale, or you put it on sale yourself, whatever. That's really the only time that people buy it in mass. So it's a single player game. I would, I would expect that of most single player games. Okay, we're not not necessarily all single player games, but you know what I mean. Yeah, you ran into that wall a ton of times. Yeah, you're just like you're like, oh, I gotta make this art. I gotta make this art. That's all there is. Builder. Um, there's a knight. Knight has the sword. All right, there is the archer. So this is how basic I'm gonna keep this. Like when when you switch the role, you will actually look like this on the screen. Your your character will be this this little axe, or your character will be this hammer, or your character will be this sword. Archer bow.
Oh, right, it's 20 wide. I can't make this perfect. Oh, well. There's the bow. We got the healer. Healer has a boomerang. Shoot, that's kind of like a the archer. Good enough. All right. There. What other roles we got? Um, bomber. It's an easy one. Let's draw some bombs. Look, it's an apple. Oh man, now I don't know whether it's a bomb or an apple. Uh, it's even more confusing now. Look at the navigator window. Forgot about that thing. It's nice to look up here at this little tiny bit of art. No, no, yeah, that just looks more like an apple than it should. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Affix. Thank you. Yeah, I don't like... Yeah, definitely. I don't like any of those versions, man. It's like, really? But it is a really... I will admit, this is a really old copy of Photoshop. This thing is like... Almost... Is it 15 years old? It's way too old to, <laughs> to, to be using. But it still works. I'm going to use it as long as I can. No, for this next game, I'll mostly be making my art in Magic of Voxel, actually. Magic of Voxel is, you know, for the, all the 3D models and stuff like that. Um, but for now, I'm making these 2D mock-up art sprites so that I can mock up the gameplay and focus. Rather than... Rather than get distracted by making art. Which I will have to do at some point, and I will relish. I will relish in making the art. But for now, I've been Mr. Voxel Programmer too long. Ah, I've been doing this, just like this piece of art right here. Been making that piece of mock up art too long. Let's make the next one. Oh no, dude. Sorry to hear that. Bomber, there's the mage. The mage has lightning gloves. It's kind of a tricky one to draw, actually. I guess I could just draw lightning. Hey, 10 bucks a month isn't too bad. Yeah. Yeah, gosh, if I if I had to if I if this laptop ever died, I'd be in the same boat. I'd be like, "Well, I probably should get the latest version." This is a horrible looking <laughs> hand. Oh, because the thumb shouldn't be like that much. Eh. Once again, 
mock-up sprites. Can't spend too long on them. It's good enough. All right, so we got a hand for representing the the uh, the lightning mage. All right. There. Whoops. Next, we're doing. Okay, we've got the mage. There's the spy. There's the. Uh, but first, there's the assassin. Who has daggers? Throwing daggers. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is quite smart of them, right? To do it that way. Okay, it's so much more affordable. All right, and um, there is the spy. Spy, we'll just do a little spy hat type thing. I was thinking like a fedora. Uh, good enough. <clears throat> Next, all right, we've got Rollis. Shoot, I forgot about Rollis. Roll this is when you have no weapon. What the heck am I going to represent that? It's just empty handed. Hmm. I could just do a circle. Or maybe I'll, yeah, maybe I'll just do a circle. Yeah, I've heard really good things about uh, Pixelmator and A Sprite and a few of those other ones, but Pixelmator in particular I would look at because it seems to have all those effects that I would want to use and stuff. There we go. Okay, so the circle just represents you when you are rollless. That should go all the way at the beginning. Cool, man. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Super glad. But you got through a few dungeons too. I'm proud of you, man. Some people, uh, some people don't even get into a dungeon. <laughs> Seriously. Those people that aren't really into Zelda games probably won't even find a dungeon in Songbringer. They'll just be like, eh, give up. But you know what? Everybody that played it at PAX that I watched in person and GDC and E3, they all kicked ass. They got through two dungeons each. But I guess there was a green dot on the screen showing them where to go. But there's also a green dot showing you where to go in Songbringer. As long as you just use the compass. Well, I called it compass. The scanner drones. No, not the scanner drones. The bio detector. <laughs> you are? How? What's the percentage you're at now? Oh man, you know what? Do you oh, do you have the um do you have the ferret drones? Do you know the ferret drones show you where every item is? So you can get a hundred percent. The ferret drones are, you're, you're at 98%. You're so close. Dude, you need to find the ferret drones, man. Find the ferret drones, use them, and it will show you where that remaining 2% of those items are. Um, and the ferret drones, yeah, the ferret drones, man. They're usually, they're usually on uh, some screen of the overworld, okay? So... Look at your map on the overworld 
if there's like one square that you haven't been to on the overworld, that's probably the one that has the fair drones. And the fair drones are a secret. There's a secret to getting them, to getting into that area that's on the overworld. Um, if you'd like me to spoil it, you could you could just DM me on Twitter. I'll tell you all about it. In fact, if you want me to tell you all about how to just, how to get them fair drones, just send me your world seed on Twitter. We can chat about it. But if you'd rather find it yourself, go right ahead, man. Fair drones are your item. That's the thing you need. Shoot, I should have mentioned it earlier, like a, a month ago or something. You were asking about that. Like, you need to make a a hundred percent walkthrough. I didn't even mention this the uh, the fairy drones to you. Diamond Killer, what's up, man? Howdy. Today I'm making 2D mock-up art sprites so that I can focus purely on gameplay for the next few weeks. We got okay, we got Rollus Spy. We need oh. Now we need Arch Ragger. So if Rollus is just a circle, Arch Ragger will probably be like a Oh man, I got it. We could do. This goes back to my sixth grade elementary school teacher. A circle minus was like sort of good, and then a circle plus was really good. Or maybe it was circle puff. That's right, it was a circle puff. So, what I got planned for this project. This is a five-on-five five, um, multiplayer game. Think Songbringer, but five-on-five. Five. Um, and there will also be a Battle Royale mode, right? So you'll be able to, like, fight it out, Battle Royale style, last person that's alive wins. But this five-on-five five is... I'm calling it creative five-on-five five because you get to be creative about how the match plays out. In fact... The entire arena is covered in trees. This is sort of like a mock-up I was just trying to do right there. So all these little green dots are trees. This little thing down here in this corner is your base. And this is the enemy's base. Both of you have lodestones. Your goal for your team is to go sneak into the other team's base or whatever. Get into the other team's base somehow. Steal their lodestone and drag it all the way back to your base. And you have to, you get to be creative because you, you cut down trees to carve out your lanes each match. So your matches, your match lanes are going to be different every time. You're going to have to deal with the enemy carving out their lanes in a unique way as well. And there's uh, about eight or ten different roles. I've drawn some of them here. And these roles are basically, you have different weapons. And if you go and you purchase a different weapon, you become that different role. So if you purchase the axe... You're now the lumberjack. The lumberjack can cut down trees. If you purchase the uh, the hammer, you can build buildings. The builder can build towers and bridges and secret stuff and all sorts of buildings. Um, there's the sword knight, which you can fight. Basically, just imagine rock fighting in a 3D world. So that would kind of like be the sword. Um, there's an archer who can shoot like these energy bow archer things. There's a healer which uses a boomerang for healing, so think like Songbringer's top hat where you can throw your top hat, but only it heals you or your teammates, but also can damage other the other team somehow. Um, there's the bomber. Okay, so there's another thing too. So each, each one of these matches has two worlds to its... its there's the overworld like this where there's, there's just like imagine like a typical five-on-five five game. Um, but then there's these caves. So the caves, you can go into the caves. There's a cave on each team's um, section of the of the map. And if you go in the cave, you get to the underground. And the underground, you can, if you're the bomber, you can bomb your way through the rocks to get to the other team's cave. And basically, s s another sneaky way to get into their territory. So that's what the bomber role is. Then there's the mage, which can shoot lightning and do chain lightning effects and stuff like that. Then there's a, an assassin that throws like poison daggers. There's a spy. The spiral is, is like, I can't wait to play as this because the spiral, if you kill an enemy while you're a spy or whatever, if an enemy dies anyhow, they drop their weapon. 
right? If you go and pick up the enemy's weapon, you start to look exactly like them. So that's what the spy is. You can sneak into people's bases. And um, there's also roll lists. Roll lists is where you start out and you have no weapon whatsoever, but you can block. So um, roll lists, basically, uh, you have to be roll lists to become an arch ragger. An arch ragger is somebody that can drag a lodestone. So you have to like upgrade your roll list, no weapon ability, just to be able to drag the other team's lodestone back to your base. Um, and as soon as you grab the lodestone, you become the load dragger, which is the roll that's dragging the lodestone. And if you have multiple load draggers dragging the lodestone, you can drag it faster to get back. Um, but it's probably not that smart to do that unless the other team is all dead and respawning so you basically uh you want to have your team like sort of backing you up if you're the low dragger you got to have your team around to protect you one class um what else is there there's the ghost roll as well so when you die you become a ghost you have to go you have to walk back to your base to respawn um and but you can still be vis you can still see stuff and you still grant visibility to your team so it's kind of an interesting role um, ghosts can even fight other ghosts. Um, oh, I need to do the ghost roll placeholder. But that's kind of the concept. It's a five on five game where you get to creatively carve out your lanes each match. You get to switch roles at any time. So if you're, if you're the, you can be the lumberjack for a minute, then you can switch to the builder, then you can switch to be a knight, then you can switch to be a healer, whatever. You can switch it all up. Each role has like two abilities. There's like a basic ability and then there's like an advanced ability. So it's kind of simple, you know, only two abilities for each role. Um, and then there's also, what else? You get to build buildings. That's kind of a unique thing about it. And then there's also, um, oh yeah, I basically talked about all the, the create, the creative aspect. Why, why I would term this creative five on five. So that's load ragger in a nutshell. And it's, um, I'm excited to make it. I'm excited to make it. I'm also, um, I'm also got in the back of my mind, uh, the next project after Low Dragger will probably be Songbringer 2, I would imagine. Something like that. I really would like to get back into that world and make that game a trilogy. Um, but, but the next time doing it 3D like this. So, like this game will be. Okay, we need the Ghost. This is, oh, this is not rollless copy two. This is just, this is the load ragger. This is the arch ragger. Oh, so rollless, yeah, rollless is not really the monk class, but yeah, he could kind of look like a monk, I guess. But yeah, it's not, there's no combat. When you're rollless, all you can do is block. So it puts you in a vulnerable state. But it's the only way that you can become an arch ragger. You have to play as rollless for a second. Oh, each one of these rolls has experience too. So when you gain more experience, that roll levels up basically, and that's how you enable your your further abilities or gain more attributes, stuff like that. How long will this project take? I'm hoping I'm hoping this one takes less than Songbringer took. Songbringer took about three and a half years, believe it or not. From start to finish, from this, from start to the finish of the DLC, and the soundtrack and all that stuff, it was like three and a half years. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that I can finish this game because there's not as much content. There's this one is more. The multiplayer will take a while to create this and to get it right and stuff like that. But there's a lot less content to be created than there was for Songbringer. So hopefully I can finish this game in two years, and hopefully I can have a an alpha ready way sooner than that so people can because i really want to bring people in playing this as soon as possible so three months <laughs> oh i wish gosh why it took the longest oh you mean for uh, for songbringer uh, no, 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 it wasn't because I had to write my own engine. Um, I actually used an engine called Coco Studio X, but yeah, every game you kind of have to create your own engine on top of the engine you're using. Um, it was mostly the art content. Well, no, 
I, most of it, most of my time was spent programming. I would say 60% of my time was spent programming. 20% of my time was making art. 10% of my time was making music. And 10% of my time was, was business. You know, emails and planning and marketing and communication and Twitter and, and live streams and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, programming is just a real time killer. We got the low dragger, the arch dragger, and the ghost. I'm thinking like a Pac Man type ghost here. This is like such a good ghost art right here. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, I did not do that part. I did not do any of the ports for Songbringer except for the iPhone version. I did do that, which hasn't come out yet, but it's still it's still in, in the process. Um, the uh, So yeah, Double Eleven is the name of my publisher who uh, found me on Kickstarter. When I was doing my Kickstarter, they were like, hey, look, if your Kickstarter fails, um, contact us. We like you. We like what you're doing. And maybe you can be part of, you know, we can support you. And uh, that's how that's how I met Double Eleven. And they're amazing. I'm pff, One of the best things that's ever happened to me in my entire life is Double Eleven. Like, they they support me. Um, they pff, believe in me they market my games for me they port it to different consoles so they're the ones that did um they did the xbox one port for songbringer they did the uh this playstation 4 port um the switch port and the windows 10 port which actually uses mostly xbox libraries i think or something like that that's how that windows 10 platform gaming works um But yeah, I did I did the Windows version, the Mac version, and the Linux version of Songbringer. And the code for the iPhone version. <laughs> That's pretty ghosty. Okay, we got the ghost roll, roll list, R Tragger, Low Dragger. Okay, now it's starting to start doing some icons for other stuff. Let's do something to simply resent, re resemble a tree, maybe? Whoops. A true or a tree, either one of those. Oh man, I love misspelling things. Just, just leaving it that way. So I had this amazing adventure day this weekend, oh my god, it was so awesome. I spent the day in uh, Northern California, and I went on this hike. How well was Songbringer received on the Switch? It was really good, yeah. It was received very well on, on Switch, and uh, yeah, it did really well on Switch. Um, not as, not like awesome, none of the console versions of Songbringer did awesome enough they really should have, they should have done better it to uh, you know financially it would have been better to get more from them um yeah overall songbringer was a success and um it's you know it's been enough to make this next game so that's all i can ask for especially with today's market today's market is crazy crowded and just to even get your game to be a somewhat of a success is a huge thing, I think, today. So we got trees, we got rocks in the underworld. Let's try a lumpish rock. This is looking like a blob. Yes, tons goes into the game dev launch. Yeah, 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 it's totally. Yeah, you see that you see that on on Steam 
Especially, like, you get comments from people on Steam, like, oh, your game's horrible, I hate it. It's like, why are you, why are you even taking the time to, to, like, you know, tear my part a game, my game apart? But yeah, you, you, there's a lot of people that don't really understand or appreciate how much work goes into making games these days. Except for, gosh, there's some simple games out there that are so not time consuming at all. I almost wish I was the, I was making those kind of games, but I prefer to make more com complex games. Does that look like a rock at all? You do. You have a module for that. Tommy Killer is in uh is in game dev school. Right? Is that right? What's your what's your official um Degree title, Tommy Killer. It almost looks like a cookie. <laughs> oh, I know. We can give it some sort of like. Not so much of the blob feeling. There, that's a rock. That's totally a rock. Uh, computer science for games, huh? And it's in it's in the UK, right? Is that right? There's a lot of these new schools that teach game development. I'm I'm excited about that. When I was a kid, we didn't have that. When I was going to college, we did not have game development degrees. We had computer science though. Software engineering was my was my uh, degree that I never finished. <laughs> ah, Sheffield. Cool, man. Tree rock. I guess we need something to represent water or sky. That could just be. That's easy enough. We can just do a um. Everything white. Or, oh, well, we could do, we could do some waves. <laughs> okay, that's totally water. Um... What else do we need? Water. We need buildings. We need a tower. So basically every one of these icons represents one map unit of space. So that's why it's kind of a tower. The world's largest PlayStation development lab? Classrooms full of dev kits? What? But you haven't done anything with them? Oh, dude. You know how valuable that is? Some people get on waiting lists to try and get a dev kit, and it costs money. Like, lots of money. I think. Last time I checked, it cost money. I know, to be a kid right now, opportunities you have, left and right, whoops. Okay, what else, what else? We got a tower. Probably would need like a, oh, we need all the buildings that you can buy rolls from. Okay. That's fine. We'll do every one of these icons again with the square around it, and that'll represent uh, a building. So in fact, let's do this tower. We'll have like a rectangle around it. That represents that it's a building. Tower. Okay, so every one of these, no, not that roll. 
Not that role. This role, though. Spy, assassin, mage, bomber, healer, archer, knight. All of these roles right here need buildings themselves. You have to build these buildings in order to enable these roles to buy these, to buy these things. So, oh, let's make this. We don't need that. Need that. So, like these little pixels around the edge here. Oh, contiguous. And then we do layer via cut. There we go. Now we got a little building rectangle. So every one of these can have a building rectangle. There. So now you build a building and you enable the, the knight roll. There's another building that enables the archer and so on. Okay, so those are some other building types. Um, free space on the map will just be represented by nothing. We got something for rocks, we got something for trees, we got something for water. Shoot, this might be enough stuff. Oh, we need to represent the lodestone. Let's do that. This is fun. I'm glad, so glad to be doing a this gameplay mock-up right now. I'm really tired of working on the voxel engine. It's just got me kind of stressed out and worried. Just trying to like figure out, uh, is this even possible? Okay, good enough. That's well. There we go. Wait, maybe. Eh, it's good enough. We've been told. Yeah. Okay. I guess that's it. Is there something else? Some other mock up art sprite to create? Oh. We need a few things for attacking. We need, um, we need like a sword swipe that would represent like you're attacking something. A swipe can be any one of these, like a, the lumberjack swinging his ax, the builder swinging his hammer, the sword knight swinging his sword. All those will have like sort of swooshes. So we need like a little swooshy swipey thing to represent like, whoa, this is me. This is some this is some temporary place where it's stuff's getting damaged right here. You're gonna get hurt if you're near that. For its tenth of a second that it's alive. Or whatever. What did I just do there? I need another one of those. Okay, we got the swipe. There we go. Okay, we won't. we also want uh, the archer has a um, arrow, so we'll do arrows. In fact, we can do arrows and and the knives, the throwing knives as one. That's an arrow, okay. <laughs> that'll work and we can do a little square for things like um, bombs oh the arrow the arrow knife or even the boomerang I guess bombs So 
Fi doesn't have a weapon until he picks up someone else's. We got knives. Lightning. I'm not sure how to represent that for now. Maybe we'll do arrows. Huh. Figure that out. Okay. Yeah, this is the bomb slash whatever. Little square. That's it. Okay, we've got weapons, projectiles, all the rolls, all the buildings. I think that's pretty good. Yeah. All right, I do have a script that exports stuff. Let's, let's use that. Um, what's it, what's it called again? I think it's, did I do command B? I made a shortcut for that. Oh yeah. I don't know where the heck it's going to put these. It's working though. Wait, it shouldn't have clicked that. What's that? Well, it's initializing the video export. Here we go. Nice. Oh, you can select the folder. That's right. Sweet. Oh, that's right. It's just a render video command. Duh. Render video can take all of your frames of it. Of a, like a pixel an or frame animation and draw them. So let's go to the load dragger folder. We'll go into art sheets common. Let's use that. Oh, these are all going to be named something weird. That's fine. I mean, they'll, they'll all be placeholders 0, placeholders 1, blah, blah, blah. That's okay. I can associate those in the code. 20 by 12. Yep, yep. Render. Okay, let's see how that turned out. Yay! It's got them all in here. Okay. We've got enough art to mock up some gameplay now. Let's make sure that common sprite sheet will get updated correctly. Oh yeah, nice. That's cool. And if I go over here and build, it should notice right away. Oh, I'm building Songbringer. Wrong one. Here we go. Load dragger. Build. Good, okay, it's repacking common. Got my build script all set up for this. Thanks to Songbringer. Man, I'm pulled, I've pulled a lot of like code from Songbringer already. Code and scripts and all sorts of stuff. All right, so oh, let's just get rid of this voxel stuff. Dude, let's start mocking this up. Let's take this, this art assets and make it code. So let's see where I was at. I need to turn off all the voxels and make all the render components use sprites for now. Oh right, I played around with some sort of depth. Dude, did I leave code unchecked in? Nothing, eh? Okay, good. Let's go ahead and add all those art assets for now. Check those in.
Okay, so instead of um, every asset or every render component having a um, a three-dimensional voxel model, they're just going to have regular 2D sprites for now. So let's go ahead and turn the render component or make the render component have a sprite. Shoot, I'm going to need to create a sprite. No, wait, no. I have the node. I think I can just use node. The CC node have its own set color method. Yeah, cool. We'll use nodes for now. All right, so that means that each render component, where's render component.h? There it is. Um, we'll keep the model, we'll keep all the animations the way they are for now. We're just going to add in a node for the sprite. I think I could do this where I don't set up a node. Oh no, I do have to set up a node by passing. Oh no, it locks the node. It locks the Cocos 2D node though. We don't want to do that. Okay, we've got to make this a sprite pointer. Doesn't matter though, because this is entirely just for mocking up. But I would prefer to use a reference there or straight up just holding the node. But I can't because I need to create a sprite and then use that for the node when I initialize it, when I when I knew it, when I construct it. That's right, we got a sprite there. Render component of CPP. Uh, we need to set the sprite to null. There we go. Um, I guess this is simple enough if we just make a an extra little thing that loads. Loads a sprite. We'll surround this with an if one because this this should not be uh, you know this is not like code that I want to release. I don't want to ever release the game with this bit of code. So I'm just surrounding it with an if one so I know that oh this is a bit of code that shouldn't be here in the in the end game. Okay, so sp oh shoot. Uh, I don't want any of my low dragger code to have to know about Cocos 2D. So that's something I should mention. Um, I created this thing called KitFu, which is sort of a, a game engine wrapper layer. And it basically allows me to completely abstract away what game engine I'm using and use my own sort of interface for every game. So basically, none of the Cocos 2DX code is accessible to low dragger when I build it. It's only accessible to KitFu. KitFu and LowDragger are separate projects. So I need to actually go create a sprite class or sprite struct for um, for handling sprites. Not too bad. Okay, let's go, uh, let's create it. Um, kit, ink, kit, sprite. We'll base this off of, I think I have an object.h? Yeah, this is exactly what I need right here. This is almost the exact same thing. It's like a, this object was a sprite 3D. Sprite will just be a regular sprite. So we're gonna name, we're gonna forward declare the sprite so we don't have to ever include any of Coco CDX's nonsense if we just include sprite.h. We will need node though because it's based on node. So object, let's we'll change all those to sprites. And this is sprite. And this is a reference. Thank God. File name. Set light, get light. We don't need those. Cool. Sprite in it. Done. That's a file name or a sprite sheet name. 
essentially a file name. Okay, sprite.h, there we go. And we need a kit source sprite.cpp, much like object.cpp. Simple. We're going to include those sprite. String view cocos. Blank sprite, a lock. Um, here's where we want to, the one thing about sprites is that you want to check if it's in the sprite cache sprite frame cache or if it's uh, just a file. So we need the cacher. Why is that not loading? Okay, so if if um cacher has shoot, I don't remember. Let's go to Songbringer's code base. Also render component .cpp. When we go and create sprites. Oh right, we did the uh this in its sprite. Oh, where was the sprite frame? Maybe it's the init sprite method. Ah, oh, there it is. Sprite frame cache. Get sprite frame by name. There it is. So we'll go auto frame equals cacher gets sprite frame by name. And then if frame is not equal to null pointer, in it with sprite frame. Otherwise, in it with file. And there you go. Set the camera to the you get default? Nope, we don't want to do that. We want to use the two dimensional camera, not the three dimensional camera. So, okay, we've got a sprite class. Boom. Um, let's get, oh, that's not even going to compile that. We need to go to Kitfu, Kitfu's project, and add in this sprite class. It's already open in another works. Oh, it's already open right here. Go to the kit folder. Kit foo. Sp -p 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 right. You notice I don't add header files to my target with Xcode. All that does is it makes it so you can make sure it can find the information in the files better, but I don't know. Don't need it. Okay, let's close that. 
now that that's in there, oh, we need to go add it to the build cache as well. So we'll go to uh, build kit source cache, CD kit, no, no, what is it? Yeah, ink kit, oops, what's up? What did I just do? Oh, okay, all right, we're there. Um, and then copy kit, ink kit sprite. And this time, copy kit source right. Okay, so that basically makes it so my little build script system can, if I modify this sprite file and press and build, it will know that it needs to rebuild kitfu and load dragger. In the meantime, we can get it so it stops rendering the models in the render system. Uh, gosh, we should probably turn this off with an if. For now. Okay, and for now we'll just do... Uh, Loop over each entity. Probably should move the camera first. Oh, the view needs to set a different camera for camera zero. Um, you camera zero. Oh, are we doing the frame buffer? No, let's turn off the frame buffer. So here we go. This is the ortho camera. We'll turn on the default camera for now. So camera zero is now default, which means it will use the 2D orthographic perspective. Right? Yeah, 2D. Okay. We don't want to do this. Just want to set that right there. View camera zero. Oh, we need the player in.
Ooh, let's call, let's actually do camera pause equals negative half the screen size. Let's view get frame buffer size, and then camera pause times equals negative zero point five. Then set that. That's enough to get the camera moving for now. And now we need to do a loop over each entity and at least set their current render position. That's it. Oh, we'll need to move its sprite. So we don't need render pause, old render pause. We just got if E position then e.render.position equals e.position.pause. And what else is, oh, set the sprites position as well. So if e.render.sprite is not equal to null. No, we can just do a safe expression. Safe expression e.render.sprite s s set position e dot rendered up position okay we've got a movement system already in place oh will this hmm oh we need to add this we created the render component. Can create the sprite. We need to add this. We need to create the sprite and add it to the view. So sprite equals new sprite. We need to know what a sprite is. And then sprite in it with S. Huh. We need to make C tags. Whenever I add a file to the kit. I need to add, make my C tags up again. Oh, dang. We are out of time for today's stream. That's, that's the dinner bell right there. It's time to get some dinner. Well, um, that was a good, good little, really productive live stream here. I got all these little markup art sprites created for all of the different roles you could be in this multiplayer five on five game. And the trees and the rocks and the water and the buildings and even projectiles and the lodestone. So that's all ready to go. I've even got some code almost going here where I can um, create sprites and represent all the game render objects render components with sprites for now and focus entirely on gameplay so that's going to be it for today's video this live stream is now ending but i'll be back at you with some more videos this week maybe a few different videos this is going to be kind of a short week for me because it's thanksgiving hope y'all if you're if you're in the if you celebrate thanksgiving Hope you all have a nice Thanksgiving weekend. If you're in a country that doesn't support that or, or a state of being that doesn't support that, then hope you have a good weekend anyways. It was good chat with you guys. Ichi Sero, Dom Killer, everybody. Pedro. Catch you next stream, yeah. See you guys around. Happy holidays.